just another revolution, sir. It's the first one we've had this week. can't even play checkers with all these uprisings. The afternoon paper, sir? <laughs> yes. Is there anything important? I'll see, sir. All quiet in Sylvania. The Prime Minister announces that the revolutionist guns have been silenced and Sylvania is once again peaceful and serene. This must be an early edition, sir. <laughs> oh. Why, Monty? I thought you were going to meet the new American ambassador. I'm not going to risk my life to meet any ambassador. You're right. He's only a cattle king from Oklahoma, even if he is the American ambassador. He'd be nothing but a figurehead. Marty is the real ambassador. That may be his plane now. Yes, it's coming from the northwest. The boy said he was flying from Berlin. Seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. That's the same salute to give the president of the United States. Hey, who do they think I am? See nobody here. I bet you come to the wrong airport. Now that's what I call a real reception committee. <laughs> Thanks, boys. I had no idea I'd ever get a welcome like this. I hadn't even said anything yet. Hey, what kind of reception committee is this? I'm afraid, Your Excellency, this is not a reception committee. It's a revolution. The sort of thing that's happening every day in Sylvania. Yeah? They'll never have peace while the Polygoff's in power. Who oh, the Polygoff? That's a prime minister, ain't it? Prime minister, dictator, the best hated man in the Balkans. Say, you seem to know quite a bit about this country. Uh, do you live here? Well, no, no, I'm just a pilot from Berlin. The embassy car, Your Excellency. <laughs> well, hey, is that it? That thing looks like a tank. Well, goodbye, Mr. Ambassador. Oh, well, wait a minute here, here. Have a little drink on me, will you? No, I, I don't accept tips, thank you. You don't? Well, <laughs> maybe you're the first one I've met in Europe that don't. Well, anyhow, I appreciate it, and I had a fine trip. You're a dandy pilot. Good luck, Mr. Ambassador. Thank you. Good luck to you. <laughs> well, <laughs> Chicago taxi. <laughs> Howdy, folks. Mr. Harper, I believe? Uh, yes. yes. How do you do, sir? Uh, are you the gentleman that I'm 
supposed to try and replace? No, I'm the secretary of the legation. Oh. Elton Montgomery. Yes. And this is my wife. Oh, I'm glad to meet you. Ah, here is your predecessor now, Mr. Ambassador Littleton. How long has he been here? Four months. He was well when he came. How do you do, sir? <laughs> Welcome to Sylvania, Mr. Harper. <laughs> well, what I've seen of it, you're welcome to it yourself. Sylvania's not so bad. Oh, no. The land of smiles, they call it. <laughs> <laughs> A bomb! I'm shot! I'm shot! Take me away! Take me out of here! <laughs> land of smiles. Mr. Harper, shall I show you to your quarters? Sure, let's go. I didn't get your name. Northfield Slater. I'm the second secretary. Say, there's a mass of you secretaries, ain't there? I'm fourth and fifth and sixth. Well, I do hope he takes his hands out of his pockets when he meets the queen. We'll be lucky if he doesn't slap her on the back. What can you expect of a man who learned his manners on a cattle ranch? <laughs> we complained because the last ambassador couldn't speak French. This one can't even speak English. Is that, is that where the ambassador sleeps? Yes. For a single man? It's a shame. I suppose you never slept in anything like that before. What, with all these birds? Yes, I did. I slept under a tree with birds in it once, but only once. You are to be presented to their majesties at their audience tonight. Tonight? It's mighty early. Say, gee, I, you know, that'll be my first crack at meeting royalty. Perhaps you'd like some help in getting dressed. Say, <laughs> I've dressed in some of the best upper berths in America. Certainly don't need any help in here. Come in. Hey, what's the idea of the romper? Why, this is the regulation court costume. Of course, you'll have to wear one. See, listen, this is the second time in my life that I ever had on one of these things. But this is a good one. I just got it from Montgomery Ward. And I'm certainly not going to trade these for a pair of those step-ins. Well, you really ought to wear them, so I brought you a pair of mine. Say, listen, if there should be a popular demand at the party to see my shins, why, I can just, I can just roll up my britches, see? How's that? <laughs> Look at that. That'll give them a treat, <clears throat> won't it? <clears throat> Charlie Dawes, it ain't any better than that. I, I think I'd better give you a few instructions in court etiquette. Yeah? What are you, the male Emily Post around here? Say, uh, would it be all right if I uh, just went to the party and acted uh, respectable? Would I be out of order? Uh, no, of course not, of course not. Oh, say, I got something here want, got to take over there. I, I got the kid a present. The kid? You sure. mean his majesty? Sure. A little boy, eight years old, ain't he? That's what they told me. Look, I got him, I got him a cowboy suit. Cowboy suit? Yeah. For the king? Sure, look at that. And look here, I got, I got him an air rifle, too. Look at there, ain't that a dandy? Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> His Excellency, the Ambassador from the United States. Your Majesties, may I present to you my successor in office, 
Mr. Ambassador Harper. We are happy to welcome you, Mr. Ambassador. Pleased to meet you. And how are you, Your Majesty? We are quite well, Your Excellency. <laughs> Say, I, I brought you over a couple of presents. I thought maybe you'd like something that our American kids have. Thank you, Your Excellency. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you what they are, because I don't want to spoil the surprise. Hold me up. I feel faint. But I feel faint myself. Say, uh, ain't this kind of late for the king to be up? Our receptions are always held at 10 o'clock. It's the court rule. Oh, <laughs> over home, why, the, the parents, they kind of pack the kids off to bed pretty early, you know? Well, just as soon as they hear Amos and Andy, and they, they kind of in a hurry to get rid of them anyhow for a little while. Have you any children of your own, Mr. Harper? No, no, my, I'm single. But I've often thought of adopting one if I could find the right kind of a boy. This little lad here would, he, he'd suit me, but you haven't uh, thought of giving him up, have you? <laughs> he wants to adopt the king. He wants to adopt the king. Oh, we must get him away. His Highness, Prince Topolikov. Your Majesty. Your Majesty. What a, what a tough looking guy he is. And he's the one that I've got to negotiate my commercial treaty with. Topolikov wants none of your American goods. He and his clique are getting rich, selling supplies to Sylvania. Yeah? You, you mean they... You mean they grafted? Yes. And I thought we were original. It was he who forced the king's father to abdicate. And ever since then, Sylvania's been going from bad to worse. Why don't they get this ex-king back here? Running this country ain't any job for a kid. What does he like, this new American ambassador? A fool. You'll have no trouble handling him. I'm afraid you are wrong. The American government is determined to put through their commercial treaty. And they appointed this man Harper because they know he's shrewd. You know what I think? What? The queen has hurty feet. Hurty feet? Yes. Hurty feet? I beg your pardon. But would I be breaking up the party if I mooched along home? Oh, doesn't they know that he must wait for royalty to dismiss him? The little fella looks a little... Kind of pale. Uh, you sure you given him enough time to play? We spare him all we can, but of course he has many responsibilities. You know what I'd like to do? I'd like to come over here sometime and teach him how to play baseball. I wish you would, Mr. Harper. Good night. Good night. Ladies and gentlemen, we bid you good night. I say, he sent the queen home. Tough on a little kid like that, having to be king. Too bad his daddy didn't stick on the job. Mr. Harper, these are questions of internal politics which do not concern our embassy. Ah, oh, rats. What politics got to do with it? I'm only thinking of a nice woman and a fine little boy and a home all busted up. Gee, I, I like that queen. I understand that Her Majesty has hurty feet. Hurty feet? Hurty feet? Hurty feet? Hurty feet? Hurty feet?
be frightened. It's Lotha. What are you doing here? Is it so strange that a man should be found at the door of his wife's room? I'm not your wife any longer. Vanya, please listen to me. I risked my life to come and see you. You made your choice. You, you deserted me for another woman. That's what Dipolikov told you. You told me yourself the day you left for Vienna. We just had that terrible quarrel. I wanted to make you believe that I didn't care anymore. I was mad with jealousy and anger. You'd no cause to be jealous of me. I know that now. Those stories I'd heard were all a part of Dipolikov's plot. And then, once I was in Vienna, his newspapers blazed with the account of my desertion. I was faced with a revolution if I tried to return, so I signed the application to save the kingdom for Paul. And now that you've had your holiday, you, you want to come back and reclaim the throne? No, no, I only want you. Vanya, don't you believe me? No. But you must. I swear by our love, by our child. Let me go. Vanya. Let me go or I'll call the sentry. Very well. Call. Oh. Oh, don't you see that by coming here you only endanger my position? And Paul. Does that mean so much? It means more than a dead love. Who goes there? There he is. Hurry, this way. Racket down. I'm going to go see. Quick, close the door. Well, if it ain't my old friend, what are you made up for? Who's out here? Here, here. Don't open that door, please. Hey, what? What's the matter? Somebody after you? Wait a minute. Let me see. Thanks. You've saved my life. Not if they catch you, I haven't. Go on, get out. Go ahead, Pete, and open the door. Well, if it ain't Mr. DePolikoff. Prince. Oh, hello, Prince. Say your grace. Say your grace? Oh, what is it? We're going to have something to eat around here? Oh, oh, I got. Pardon my calling at this unusual hour, Your Excellency. Oh, that's all right, Grace. Why, this is, uh, this is just the shank of the evening with us ambassadors. I understand that Lothar, the ex-king, has taken refuge in your embassy. The ex-king? Oh, you mean the, the, the queen's husband? Her former husband. The man who deserted her. <laughs> well, if there's <clears throat> any ex-king around here, well, it certainly hasn't been introduced to me. May I have your permission to search the embassy? Well, Grace, <clears throat> that brings up a question of law. As I understand it, this embassy is just as much a part of American soil as Hoboken, maybe more. Well, I'll uh, have to take that up with uh, Mr. Littleton. Well, sure, you are the ambassador. Okay, Grace, go get your man. Search. <laughs> Is there any chance of his being recalled? 
There may be. Senator Pillsbury of the Foreign Relations Committee is making a tour of the European embassies. Uh, is he coming here? I've written to him that we are greatly in need here of a visit of inspection. Good, good. I don't know whether you've noticed it, but Mr. Harper seems to be very popular with Her Majesty. Yes, I have noticed it. And as for the king, he's beginning to talk exactly like an American child. He not only talks like an American child, he... I'll show you. My window looks out at a palace garden. just told him to go scratch out a cool place and lay down. Then he picked up a bat and went and knocked two home runs. He did? I, I was sitting in the stands one time and he hit a foul and, and glanced right off my head. Did it leave a lump? It did for a little while. May I feel it, Mr. Bill? Sure. Right, right there's my word. Right there. There is a lump, Mr. Bill. Yeah, it? Isn't that great? Hey, uh, that's it. Konstantinovich single, Popovich fumbled, Moldegodavi and Koskalaskas are both safe. <laughs> By golly, you can't beat those Notre Dame guys. He wins. The base is full and I'm up. Not my glove. I'm up. Now remember, Mr. King, don't swing at any of the bad ones. Okay, Mr. Your Majesty quite ready? Come on, Fast Phoenix, give it all you got. Ball one. Now don't swing at the bad ones. Ball two. Is there no fear that the ball might strike His Majesty? I hope it does. He can walk to first base. Ball three. Hey, that wasn't a ball. That was a strike. Sure it was. You're trying to walk him like it did before. Ah, oh, go scratch out a cool place and lay down. What did His Majesty say? I think he advised the other young gentleman to seek a refrigerated spot and recline there. I fear Your Excellency was unwise in bringing that uh, young sharp here. He's the best ball player of the lot. His father is a shoemaker and an ardent Republican. Republicans are good shoemakers. Shop arrested, do you? Sure I do. He hit me. You all saw him. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah, but you hit him first. I am the king. Tell me, General, if I give the order, can I have him shot? Hey, wait a minute. I taught you the game of baseball, and there's nothing in there about shooting the first baseman. An umpire, maybe. That's different. I can't promise your majesty that this wicked boy will be most severely dealt with. Good. Now let's go on to the game. 
Ain't no game to go on with. That was the ninth inning, and you was the third out. Was I out? Sure you was out. So long, boys. See you tomorrow. I'm a bum sport, don't you? No, if I thought so, I wouldn't be palling around with you. But you don't think I acted like Babe Ruth would if someone punched him? No, you haven't had Babe Ruth's advantages. Listen, Mr. Bill. If Sheriff apologizes, I'll tell him to let him off. If he don't? Go, ding it! I'll tell him to let him off anyhow! Now, that a king. Now, Babe Ruth would be proud of you now. This isn't a matter for Paul to decide. Well, it ought to be. Boys should fight their own battles. But to strike the king, we can't let that go unpunished. Now, listen, Queen. Running this country is a man-sized job. And you ought to make a man out of that boy before you try and make a king. I think I'll send for the prime minister. Who? The Polikoff? Oh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't leave it up to him. Why not? Well, because I think he'll only tell you what's good for DePolikoff. You don't believe he's to be trusted, do you? Well, would you let me say what I think? I want you to. Well, I think he's the kind of a guy that would put a milk label on a bottle of water just to cheat the cat. Prince DePolikoff took my side during the most difficult period of my life. Yes, you mean he made you think the worst of your husband just so you'd help get rid of him. This is a subject on which no one is permitted to speak to me. I'm very sorry. Well, I appreciate your kindness, Mr. Harper. You've done so much for Paul. I, I know it isn't because of his position. Gee, I wish he wasn't a king. It's a shame to see a fine kid like that going around delivering addresses and attending functions when he ought to be playing duck on a rock. If his father only hadn't failed in his duty. His father risked his life to come here and see you. How do you know that? Well, the first night I was here, he come busting into the embassy with old Grace DePolikoff, hot-footing right after him. Where is he now? Oh, he's, uh, safe somewhere, I guess? Want his address? No. Want to send any message? Tell him that I'm, I'm glad that he escaped safely, but that he must never attempt to see me again. Say, listen, when a fellow's in love with a girl, a little thing like danger is not going to stop him. Well, I must go now. Good night, my friend. Good night. Oh, no. Good night, Your Majesty. Boy, how is that, Mr. Bill? Gee, that, that's great, Mr. King. You get along. Show me how you spin again. I've been trying and trying. <laughs> well, I showed you the other day. You was getting along fine with it. You can do this first one. See, a little simple one. And when you go along, you know, then you can switch over and you get this. That's what we call a butterfly. That's a bicycle. See. And you can get that. Gee, that's great. <laughs> oh, there wasn't much to that. <laughs> can Babe Ruth do that? Babe Ruth do it. Say, he can do it and then knock a home run with his left hand. God dig it, that's great. <laughs> no wonder they made you ambassador. <laughs> Wait a minute. Now, here's one. I'll see if I can get this one. Then I'll uh, wait, wait. <laughs> wait, I'm about to lose it over. You're the smartest man in the world. I never saw anybody do as great as that. Oh, no, not the smartest man in the world. You bet you No, are. did you ever hear of Mussolini? Bright, oh. too. Can all cowboys do that? 
All the drugstore ones can. <laughs> what do the real cowboys do? Real cowboys? Oh, they have a horse. Suggest that your magister return to bed at your earliest convenience. You know, I'm supposed to be in bed. Well, when you go to bed, leave your spurs on. Cowboys always sleep with their spurs on. I, I wanted to hear what Mother had to say about Nick Sharp. I think she's going to let him out. I'll peek through the keyhole and see if she's writing an order. Say, I'm surprised. When I was your age, I didn't even know what a keyhole was for. Maybe I, uh, maybe I did remind her of something. What do you say I go into her? Say, that's a great idea. You run in there and put your arms around her, Mr. King. Okay, Mr. Bill. Her Majesty should be here any minute now. I understand she's receiving a United States Senator, a Mr. Pillsbury. I can't understand why he isn't here. I, I'm sure he started for the palace. Doesn't Mr. Harper realize that as a member of the United States Senate, I am not accustomed to being kept waiting? Uh, yes, of course, of course. My time is valuable, very valuable. I can't wait all night to be presented to any queen. What's the matter, Colonel? You got to go out and negotiate another foreign loan? Poker! Poker! Oh! I give you the rise of two Perzeskis. Two Pajeskis, I'll raise you two Pajeskis and five Machidis. At you, I make the rise of five more Machidis. There's your Machidis, and at you, I will take the loaf. The fillet house. What's it fill it with? Aces and fours. Aces? How can you have aces? I got aces. Aces? I call them aces. Oh. <laughs> oh. No wonder you've got all that stack in front of you. You've been getting by on your dialect instead of your poker plan. <laughs> There's the inhabited house right there. I... I'll not tolerate this any longer. Oh, hello, Senator. Be waiting a minute. Oh, don't let me interrupt your poker game. Oh, sir. that's all right. I was ahead anyhow. <clears throat> Mr. Ambassador, do you realize, sir, it is 10 o'clock? 10 o'clock? The Queen will be there. Where's my sword? Where's my sword? Where's my sword? The Queen's here. Oh, uh, Senator, we can wait right here until the Chamberlain announces us. Sure, have a seat. I've just been 
fixing with some of the boys to help us get through this commercial treaty. I'm not at all sure that I approve of this treaty. Well, why not? It gives America the contract to build the railroads, put in the telephones, sell them all their farm machinery and everything. Yes, but this country isn't in a happy enough state to warrant the investment of American capital. American capital ain't been in a very happy state even at home, has it? At any rate, you won't be able to get the treaty through. Well, I was sent here to do it, and I'm certainly going to try. Your predecessor told us that the majority of the Sylvanian Parliament was against it. Now listen, Senator, I've been given a lot of free lunches up there at that embassy, and I've got some of these boys lined up. You mean you've been lobbying? Is the Senate against lobbying? It's absolutely contrary to the spirit of American government to mix or meddle in the affairs of any other country. Yeah? <laughs> Tell that to the Marines. His Excellency, the Ambassador from the United States and the Honorable Senator Pillsbury. Come on, Senator, you look great. He will put his treaty through in spite of me. But surely you can do something? Yes. I can take my troops and close Parliament. But if I do that, the ambassador may play his trump card. What's that? Lothar, the ex-king. If the queen decides to take him back, the country probably will turn against me. Where is Lothar now? I don't know. But I'm sure the ambassador knows. One of the servants in the embassy is in my pay. Maybe we can find out something tomorrow night. Tomorrow night? The ambassador is giving a party in the honor of this senator. What would Washington say if he were here tonight? What would Lincoln? May I presume to speak for them both? We in America are very glad, Your Majesty, overjoyed that your little country has weathered the storm. Though the rain of discord has drenched your souls, the thunder of war has at last ceased. Darkness has given way to light. Clouds have lifted from anxious faces, and the sunshine of a mother's smile it, may... Senator, uh, what, what is this, a weather report? <laughs> that was a joke, you know. It wasn't really a weather report at all. No, uh, no, uh, a, a joke, you know, something funny, make you laugh. Huh? Not really a weather report. I'm afraid you don't quite, uh, you know, it was a joke. Put a U.S. senator with more than two people, and ain't any power on earth can keep him from making a speech. The ambassador has received a letter enclosing another one addressed to the queen. From Lothar? Yes. The servant says it's locked in a desk in the ambassador's room. If I only could get that letter. Take me inside. I'll sleep upstairs. Which room is it? At the head of the stairs. And if I find it? The window looks out on the garden. I should be waiting below. Miss Bereska is very attractive, isn't she? I hadn't noticed it. You know, when you're an ambassador, it takes about all your time to ambass. <laughs> but she's a neighbor of yours, isn't she? Oh, just, just a casual neighbor. Oh, say, I've got a letter for you. From him? Mm-hmm. You can burn it. 
You, you don't want to see it? No. You, you mean to tell me that you haven't any curiosity? Absolutely none. All right, I'll, I'll burn it tonight. Uh, that is my wish. Oh, well, if that's your wish, why, I, I'll burn it now. Wait. On second thought, I think it would be better if you gave it to me to burn. Oh, no use bothering you with it. Uh, I've got a fireplace right down the road. No, I'd feel safer if I did it myself. You see, a letter like that is very dangerous. He may tell me where he is. He does. Who is he in? Oh, please <laughs> get it. <laughs> a woman first, a queen second. I'll get it. Your Majesty. You see, it couldn't have been a weather report because it was a joke. On the other hand, uh, perhaps it wasn't a joke after all. Let me go, please. <laughs> go ahead. I'm not stopping it. Let me out of here. I will. Just as soon as you give me that letter. Ambassador's room. Oh, please c come on and put your dress you on. Fool. Don't worry. I'll leave. I've accomplished my purpose. Say, where's that letter? I threw it out of the window. Oh, you did? I've got to get that. Ambassador from the United States. What would Lincoln think of you? What would Washington? I don't care what even Senator Borah would think of me. This woman threw a valuable letter out of that window, and I'm going to get it. In the words of the immortal Daniel Webster. Ah, oh, but... rats, the Senate's adjourned. Your Majesty. Her Majesty bids you good night, Mr. Ambassador. Now, wait a minute. I've got something to explain to her. Her Majesty saw you from the garden with her own eyes. Your Excellency, I have to thank you for a most amusing and very profitable evening. Good night. I shall send a detailed account of your conduct to Washington by cable. 
I recommend your immediate recall. from the United States for his help in organizing the Sylvanian Boy Scouts, and also for the uniforms and equipment which he kindly donated. Mr. King. Wait a minute. We regret, Mr. Ambassador, but we are engaged. Well, I just, I want to tell you goodbye. I'm, I'm leaving tomorrow. I'm going back home. Wish you a pleasant journey. Goodbye, Your Majesty. Goodbye. Oh, Mr. Bill, they told me I must talk to you, but I can't help it. I don't want you to go away. Mm, I understand. What was it you did to hurt Mother? You think I'd do anything to hurt your mother? You know I wouldn't, don't you? I said I didn't believe it, but Mother says you did. The Queen Regent wishes Your Majesty to come to the palace immediately. You mean I'm not to talk to my friend? Yes, Your Majesty. Well, I will. I don't care what you say. I don't believe he did anything wrong. You understand, Mr. Harper? I don't want to go away, Mr. Bill. It's all right. I'll have, I'll have Babe Ruth send you a picture, and I'll, I'll have him write his name on it, too. Goodbye, Mr. Bill. Mm. Goodbye, Mr. King. Goodbye, Mr. Bill. Goodbye. Remember, don't swing at the bad ones. Mr. Harper. What are you doing here? One of the sentries who knows me let me slip in. I wanted to see my boy. Gee, he's a great kid. Yes. And this may be the last time I'll ever see him. Because tonight, I'm going to test my strength against the Polikov. You mean that means another revolution? Yes. Well, everybody says you haven't got a chance. I haven't a chance if the Queen sides against me. It all depends on that. I saw her looking at your picture. She was crying. Say, listen, young fella. This country needs you. Why don't you come back here and win this scrap? And throw these grafters out of here and pass the treaty. I'll help you get your railroads and your ship canal. And you can make Sylvania the greatest little country in the world.
What a terrible revolution. It's the best thing they've had since I've been here. You know, I don't believe people over home realize the danger that you senators go through to investigate everything. Are we almost to the garage? Oh, sure. It's right down here, just a little ways now. When we get in there, we'll be all set. Hurry up. Hurry up. Oh, that's all right, Senator. We'll be perfectly safe when we get into this garage here. What should we do now? Well, we can't do anything till the Marines come. A bomb! Let's get oh, off of here. That was only a tire, Senator. Was that another tire? No, that that was a gasoline tank. So long, car. Oh, look at that knob down there. Wait a minute. Don't come near this window. Why not? Are you liable to forget yourself and make a speech? Excuse, please. Can I use this room for just one minute, yes? Sure, go ahead. Boy, ain't our room. We just borrowed it, too. We don't have to do it. Ah, thank you very much, sir. Hey, wait a minute. Come here. Yes, sir. Who's winning? Oh, first it was the dictator. Then Lothar, he commenced to win. Then the dictator, he win. And then Lothar, oh, he commenced... Oh, I see. <laughs> it's a close election. Yes, sir. <laughs> Which side you on? Oh, I'm Republican. I shoot at both sides. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, wait a minute. Here. Here. Meet Senator Pillsbury. He's a progressive Republican. He shoots at all sides. Oh, pleased to meet you, uh, Senator. Hey, wait a minute. Here. Hey. Come in. Come here. You left your gun. Ah! Here is where the shots come from. The order is, whoever is found with a gun shall be taken out and shot. Uh oh, Senator, uh, here's your gun. You are the American ambassador. Sure, yes, I'm the American ambassador. How are you? Hey, now you see the wisdom of our Republican doctrine. No meddling in foreign politics. You are a Republican. Certainly. What's the meaning of this? Order is, every Republican shall be taken out and shut. Well, this is outrageous. <laughs> Come on. You Come step on. right into that one, Senator. Say, but look at the fine monument you'll get. A senator died investigating. Come on. For taking these two, I shall get a big reward from the Polycrow. <laughs> you take them. I take them just as much as you do. You are crazy. Who well, recognized the ambassador? Who made that Republican confess? You mean confess? I mean confess just as much you as you do. You mean confess? Look at this. You mean confess? You mean confess? You mean confess? Where are they? These may be some of the Polycop's men. How's the fighting now? Oh, fine. Just perfectly wonderful. Are you on our side? Sure. Which side are they? I don't know. Behold! The war of our comrades! <laughs> Senator, if I didn't know it, I wouldn't believe you as an amateur. Oh, you are a big hero. And I love big heroes. Tonight, all is free. Drinks, kisses, everything. Senator, what would one?
Washington say? What would Lincoln say? Say, can't you get away from your friend? You think he's too attached to me? Oh, come on. Let's go somewhere <laughs> by ourselves, huh? That's all right, Senator. You know, even one of the Siamese twins got married. We must get this thing off. Do you suppose we could bribe somebody? Bribe somebody? Well, Senator, I'm surprised. Oh, that, that really hurts me, Senator. That hurts me. That's all we had left was our faith in our public men. Hamlet! Luther has captured the arsenal! <laughs> But it's important, very important. Please ask Her Majesty to speak to me. I'll try again, Your Highness. Tell Prince Lothar that I refuse his request for a meeting and forbid him to approach the palace. But Your Majesty, if the troops are divided... That's all I have to say. Her Majesty's obdurate, Your Highness. Mother! Can I go and join the fighting? Why, Paul, dear, I thought you were asleep ages ago. The guns woke me up. Can I go, Mother? Of course not. But the king ought to be at the head of his troops. Well, dear, you must go back to bed. Oh, gee. I bet Babe Ruth wouldn't be in bed with all this fighting. Now, won't you be a good boy and try and go straight to sleep, dear? Here. There, now. Mother has so much to worry her. But I want to fight for you. Yes, I know, dear. But you're just a little boy, you see. Good night, dear. Good night, Mother. Somebody here that hasn't had a drink that could do that? Somebody that's used to handling an axe? Huh? Sure, the butcher. The butcher. Right into the butcher. Give it. Strike off the chain. You ain't gonna hit where you're looking, are you? That's all right. You can always trust the butcher. Sure. Come on, get him loose. Huh? Not here, there. It won't be long now. Get him out. Get him out. Get
Hello? Hello, Clark. Vanya. Oh, he's out in the street, alone. No one knows where. Don't worry, Vanya. There'll be no more fighting. Every man shall join in the search. Guy shooting at you like that. Oh, he'd have missed me. Nothing could happen to me while I've got that rabbit's foot you gave me. Yeah? Well, that rabbit had four of them, and look what happened to him. Come on, hurry up here. Get that thing off. Get in there now. Let's get these furs and boots off. Oh, here. no, please, Mr. Milk. You said cowboy slept with the lawn. Yeah, but not in my bed. Oh, please. All right, all right. Get in there. Say, hey, Mr. Bill, why did you bring me here instead of taking me to the palace? Don't you like my bed? Sure, but you better fool my mother. You know women are for worrying. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to let her worry a little, too. Why? Because she's cross with you? No, but uh, I found out when... Two people who worry about the same thing, it's liable to bring them together. Get in there. Well, give me my gun. Oh. Get your gun now. Here, let's put it under your head like the cowboys do. There you are. Well, good night, Mr. King. Good night, Mr. Bill. <laughs> of a real war, when the fighting only lasts three hours and the celebration runs for three weeks. Never did ask me. Hello, Mr. Harper. Oh, oh 
Hello, Queen. Well, uh, how do you do? Your Majesty? How are you, Bill? Say, it must feel great to get back on the throne. Oh, more than that. It's great to be home. We owe it all to you, Mr. Harper. Uh, we'd like you to join us at the Grand Review this afternoon as our guest of honor. Oh, I'm sorry, but uh, I can't do it this afternoon. But this is the royal pageant. We want you there beside us. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't be there. I've got a date. Oh, well, can't you break it? Is it so important? Yes, you see, I promised my partner here that we'd go fishing. You told me I could go fishing, Mother. And she said I could go barefoot, too. What do you think of that, Mr. Bill? <laughs> I think that's great, Mr. Boy. Mm -hmm.